Animatronics have always been kind of creepy. I honestly don't really understand how they've ever become so popular. Because there was never a time in history when non-living things copying human mannerisms wasn't scary. I guess maybe it's sort of like a car wreck. While it's terrifying, you just can't seem to look away. My wife and I visited Death Valley on a weekend road trip. It was incredible getting to look out and see the completely open air away from the hustle and bustle of the big city. The sunset was magnificent, truly one of the most awe-inspiring things I have ever seen. Just coming out to the highway wasn't nearly enough for us though. We wanted no sign of civilization in sight. So we got onto a small dirt road and just started driving out into the desert. Finally, we found a little place to pull off the side of the road and get into the back of the truck. I blew up my air mattress in the back and we laid on it beneath a sky full of stars. About an hour later, though, I woke to a strange voice murmuring out in the darkness. I looked around for a bit but saw nothing, figuring it was just some sort of dream in my half-awake state. I laid back down to sleep. I awoke to the sun blazing down on my face and hot sand blowing across my skin. Considering that when we had gotten there the night before it was completely dark, I looked around at the area fascinated at where we had ended up. There was nothing around for miles, except about 50 feet away from the car there was something standing out in the desert. It looked truly surreal. I hopped off the truck and realized it was an old Chuck E. Cheese animatronic. Not having seen one of those in years, I got very excited and told my wife to come over. It had many of its old mechanisms still in place, too. In fact, it was honestly a bit strange that someone would leave such an intact animatronic out there to rot. There was also an old note taped to the bottom, but the writing had faded away. I decided to take the animatronic with us. I'm a pretty decent mechanic, and I figured I could fix it. After bringing it back to the house, I put it in the shed but my wife hated the thing and would ask me what I was going to do with it every chance she got. I kept telling her I'd fix it up and make it cool so I could give it to our son Matthew. That only bought me about a week and a half though. So I started working on it and actually got it done pretty quickly. I was even able to give it to Matthew on his birthday a couple weeks later. I set it up in his playroom, even buying some of the actual Chuck E. Cheese clothes online and putting them on for him. It really looked just like one of the ones from the restaurant, and he already loved the character, so he went nuts when he saw I had built him his own animatronic. He would play for hours in there with the thing. Even though I couldn't really get it to sing all that well, it always jammed up and had this mysterious hum emitting from its backside. I figured that was probably why someone had abandoned it out in the desert in the first place. Over the coming months, he seemed to create a friendship with the thing. We would hear him chatting in the room with it all day long. It started to disturb us a bit though, because when we would walk into the room, he would immediately stop talking, as if the conversation was private. I asked him once what they were saying, and he told me that Chucky was telling him about things they could do for fun. He also said that Chucky wasn't his name anymore, that its name was Matthew now, and that he was Chucky. I thought that was weird. But he was a six-year-old. It probably wasn't the weirdest thing he had ever said. When he started dressing Chucky in his clothes, though, I started getting a bit more concerned. Every time I would ask him why he was putting his clothes on Chucky, he would just say that it wasn't Chucky, it was Matthew. At the same time, he began to grow more and more distant. He wouldn't answer us when we would ask him questions and wouldn't even hug us anymore. It was like he had become a total stranger. Thinking there might be some real psychological issues going on with him, we scheduled a few sessions with a therapist, but she basically just told us what we already knew. Matthew had the belief that he wasn't Matthew anymore, and was totally convinced that the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic was the real Matthew. Horrified, we told him he wasn't allowed to play with the animatronic anymore. Then that night at dinner we were disturbed by a knock at the door. It was a woman telling me to stop scaring the neighborhood kids with our robot waving out the window. I told her that it couldn't wave and that it wasn't even pointed towards the window. 
but she scoffed and turned away, not believing me. Stunned, I slowly walked back to the playroom to check. When I opened the door, I noticed that the Chucky was now looking out the window. I thought maybe Matthew had turned it around at some point, but he just said that it wasn't him. This stuff was really starting to freak me out. So I moved the animatronic out to my work shed again and planned to dismantle it the first chance I got. Matthew did not like that idea though. He said that Chucky didn't like being out there in the shed, and if I didn't bring him back I would regret it. Hearing that from my son scared me so much, but I also noticed that he finally referred to the animatronic as Chucky, its own name again, which made me feel like I'd made the right move. Later that night though, I awoke to Matthew standing above my bed, holding a kitchen knife in his hand. He was in some sort of trance, just whispering, Where a kid can be a kid, where a kid can be a kid, where a kid can be a kid. I grabbed his arm and ripped the knife away and tossed it to the ground, and he immediately awoke, crying. The next day I brought the animatronic to the dumpster at the local Walmart and just left it there. Afterwards I felt a bit calmer thinking I had finally ridded the house of the horrifying thing. Sadly, I was sorely mistaken. I went outside the next day and the animatronic was back in front of the house, just staring at me with that disturbing rat smile. I was beside myself and filled with rage. Immediately, I brought it to the shed and tried to disassemble it. It was weird though, none of the bolts would come out. Eventually, I moved on to bolt clippers, a sledgehammer and even a blowtorch. Nothing seemed to damage the thing. Even scarier was that each time I would take a new tool out, I would notice that its eyes were pointed at me, no matter where I was in the room. Out of ideas, I tossed the animatronic into the back of my truck and just started driving. I didn't even know where I was going at first, but eventually I ended up back at Death Valley. I found that little dirt path out into the desert and started driving down it ended up at the exact same spot where I'd found it before. Took it out of the truck and left it there. Except at the bottom I attached a note reading, Beware of this animatronic. Horrible things may happen to you and your family if you allow this into your home. Please stay away. Luckily it's been months and I haven't seen the animatronic again. Matthew has started returning back to normal and doesn't have much recollection of the entire event. I still think about it almost every day though, about what would have happened if I hadn't woken up when I did. So be careful what you bring into your home. There are things out there that appear to be sweet, but just underneath the surface have truly sinister intentions. <laughs>